I remember to turn the mic on this time. Welcome back to the channel. I am Todd. I'm the host here. So today we're going to take a look at an upgrade I did for my other. Now I put a poll up a couple of weeks ago I think it was and overwhelmingly everyone was like upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. They all clicked at upgrades for the other. Well, listen, these upgrades, I got to pay for the upgrades, right? I don't have these great, awesome, huge sponsors that are willing to give me a bunch of cool stuff to mount and break and, and do all that good stuff. Wish I did. But I've heard start small and work our way up. So the first upgrade, which is actually really important. Obviously, everyone's seen how I set mine up with the reflex site for CQC work so on and so forth but it's really important because I'm gonna I'm assuming that my batteries will die just as I need them most that being said I always carry extra batteries in the vertical grip but say for some reason I don't have any all right what do I do well I sure as heck can't aim the gun at that point so when we ordered I keep looking over here at the thing when we ordered the uh, Tipman Arms M422s. Uh, we also ordered a whole bunch of uh, spare magazines so people can purchase their 22 rifle and pick up a few extra mags if they so choose. Inside the box, Tipman Arms aside, they would include a pair of flip up iron sights, which we had talked about. And that was the other thing I had said should I buy these? Uh, a few people gave it a thumbs up. Listen, I needed flip up sights. I thought it was a great deal. So, bought them. Obviously, they're not in here anymore because they're on the gun. Now, when I was looking at them, they looked rather large. And I was concerned that adding this type of furniture onto the Picatinny Rail uh, would push a lot of things around. I wouldn't have the room that I wanted. I thought maybe the flip up sights on my MP1522, which are Magpul, would be smaller and take up less real estate. I went home, I measured, and well, they're exactly the same size. So it didn't matter to me. There you go. I left the 1522 Magpul uh, flip up sights in place and decided that I was going to come to work and tear apart my other <clears throat> and then put it all back together with iron sights <clears throat> so as I get all choked up so here is the other and you can see the flip up sights are installed now there's a few drawbacks with it and there's a few things that are really good with it so we're gonna go through them real quick they're flip up sights we're not gonna get too um, in depth. I'm sure everybody understands flip up sights. So, yes, they do fold out of the way, which is good. They are rather robust and seem similar quality to the Magpul ones that I have. The nice thing, though, is the Magpul ones, you need a tool to adjust the front sight. That's fine. I usually have one of those tools on my keychain. These, right here, this one, you don't need to adjust it with a tool the knob you can just click it and uh, move it up and down to get a good zero the convenience of not needing extra tools is always a plus the other thing I like and it, it's not gonna really matter for me just because I have stuff in the way but when they are laying down there is a small notch up front and I'll get a better shot of it and then you have the notch in the back. Literally, as they're laying down, you can have uh, a very rudimentary, non zero uh pair of iron sights. And then flipping them up, they act like normal iron sights. So, one of the things that I did notice is when I went out to zero these, and here's a little footage of that.
one thing I noticed, <clears throat> I want to say I'm zeroed, I wanted to double check where I was in comparison to the red dot. Now, putting the things on, I had to obviously take the red dot off a few times, uh, trying to figure out if there was going to be enough room for where I have this set and putting the rear side on. And we'll cover that. So this came off like three or four times. And ended up going back in the exact same spot, but because I removed it, I wanted to check zero on it after I zeroed the iron sights. So as you can see, where it lays down, it is really close to the charging handle. Now I do have enough room to grab it like this and pull the charging handle back for when I'm locking the bolt carrier group to the rear. The only drawback comes is getting good purchase on it this way. Obviously I'm not going to come over like this. So grabbing it like this, I can do it, but I do run a chance of hitting this back here and accidentally uh, moving it. It's one of those things that's like, it's, gotta, it's a trade-off. I like them, just got to be mindful of not hitting the little knob, throwing the zero off in the rear. When it came to the front sight that was up front, currently had the flashlight laser in the way. So I had to dismount that, move it back. It does not interfere with the laser or the flashlight in its current position. But I also wanted to make sure I had enough room to remove the battery cap to get access to the battery if the battery dies. Now if the sight is laying down, it doesn't offer that much room. So if I move the sight up, I have all that room to get the battery in and out, which is good because the battery does not go the whole length of this. With moving this further back, making room for that front sight, on top here, I had the pressure pad. So I had to move the pressure pad to the other side. Now it's fine here, it's just if I'm going to use it, instead of coming over the top to depress the pressure pad, I'm now going to have to reposition my hand on the side to activate it. Not a big deal, just have to practice and get used to it. Now, I retained the cables for the flashlight and the lasers uh, with small black zip strips. I decided to upgrade that section too. So instead of going with the zip strips, I wanted to go with something that was a little forgiving when it comes to moving around because zip strips can eventually cause chafing to the wiring and put undue pressure on the wiring. So. I went with, I know it looks like a rubber band. It's called a Ranger Band. You can get them on Amazon and you get a huge package like this with tons of different sizes and you can run them all over your other or your AR or what have you. They are great for cable retention, for sling retention, whatever you need to hold things down. And they're good just to have around because you, you can use them in your day to day life. A pack like that will only run you a couple of bucks. So it's a pretty good deal. If you're interested, can't recommend them enough. So after zeroing the iron sights, I had folded them, well, popped them up, and I'll show you right here. I took one shot at the target. Then what I did was I folded the sights down, 
turned on the red dot, and took three shots with the red dot to see if there was going to be a co-witness. And for those who don't know, the co-witness is the internal dot that's on here, the optic, the pip, should be aligned with the iron sights. So when you look through the iron sights, the red dot should literally be sitting right on top of the front sight right up here. Now, originally it wasn't. My red dot had been shifted off to the right by a few clicks. I uh, wasn't sure if it was just because of me taking it on and off or if that's just the way it was going to be was the optic was going to be zeroed just fine hit where I wanted it to but the iron sights would not co-witness turns out because I removed the optic a few times moving it around the zero was thrown off first few shots they didn't even hit paper that being said I decided I just dial this right over on top of the iron sights because I knew those were a good zero turns out just a little adjusting after that and I was good to go so the iron sights do co-witness with my reflex sight from Firefield. One of the nice things I do like about the rear sight is when you pop it up, I, I keep touching it. So when it pops up, there's two, uh, I don't want to call it two settings, they're iron sights. There, there's two ways to use the iron sight. When you bring it up, the piece in the back is going to be folded together, and that is your peep sight. That is for accuracy at a long distance. The aperture in the back is very small. It reduces the amount of light coming in, allowing you to focus better at distance. If you flip that piece down, it opens up to the ghost ring, which when you're looking through, it's called a ghost ring because the ring pretty much disappears, it's all blurry, and you're left with just the front sight. This is for quick acquisition. So you'd call this more for the combat version. Uh, it's a combat sight, ghost ring, ghost sight, several names that I've, that I've seen and I've heard in the past. So depending on what you're trying to do, you're going to either use it for distance or you're going to have it open. And even when it is open and laying down, you don't have to worry about catching and breaking it off. It's in a good spot. So I'll probably just run mine open because if I'm popping these open, this is built for CQC and this is not built for distance shooting. Maybe in the future, I will have a dedicated uh, Connecticut other with LPVO that is specifically for doing those more variable shots of up close and then of course at distance. So in the end, the first upgrade isn't anything super major. Um, it's a pair of iron sights. Would I recommend them? Highly. Yes. Great red dot, LPVO, it's all good. A good set of irons because if anything you have runs on batteries, you might not have the battery you need the moment you need it. So it's nice to have some old school, no batteries required, flip up sights. Now whether you run them in line on the Picatinny rail or you're running 45 offsets, it really doesn't matter. The reason I chose in line is because I have a reflex sight so it's literally just a window I'm looking through. I can still see the sights. If I was running an LPVO or any other optic that had some sort of magnification, obviously running in line sights would throw it off because you have a scope or an optic in your way. With something like an ACOG, uh, the LPVO, or anything in between, I would probably run the 45 degree offset sights. So, if while shooting, for some reason, the sight went down, I could just turn and engage quickly, and I don't have to fight trying to remove the optic that is going to be in my way. Long story short. If you need some backup sights, I recommend you buy them. And I'm not going to say, oh, you need to buy the Titman Arms ones, or you need to buy Magpul ones, or, or this. Or that. Buy the ones that you can afford. Don't go buck wild. 
especially if they're not going to be your primary set of sights. You just want to make sure they're easy to adjust and they're not going to, as you move the firearm around, bump it, bang it, fast rope, run through compounds, trying to get the bad guy, whatever it is you're doing. You don't want all that movement to jar your sights off, throwing them off. So when that time comes and you need to use those backup iron sights, the zero that you did get so many, many months ago is now thrown completely out of whack. You want to have something that is pretty much locked in all the time. Maybe a click or two off just because things do uh, move over time due to the rough handling of them. <clears throat> Told you it was going to be a short, quick video. So, again, you need iron sights? Get iron sights. So, if you're still here, you're still watching. I appreciate it. Thanks. Now, I have talked about it before. In the bottom, in the description down, is a link to buy some t-shirts. One shirt, actually. And it says that you're never out of the fight. And that's the way you need to live your life. Whether times are hard, uh, everything's falling apart, you've lost your job because of COVID, uh, anything's going wrong, just remember, don't give up because you're never out of the fight. Tomorrow is always a better day. Or you could just have my point of view. I wake up in the morning, I get out of bed on my own will. It's a good day. I don't care what else happens. I'm a happy person because I got out of bed and I'm walking around talking, breathing. It's always a plus. And you can always take Admiral McRaven's advice and make your bed. This way, no matter how bad your day is, when you come home, you see that fresh made bed, at least you accomplished that. All right, my friends, that is it for this video. As always, I will see you on the trail and stay safe in the fray. I'm out.